Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear friends, Allah bless you all. Okay, let's start Al Fatiha. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Salatan tufrihuhu wa tusiduhu wa turdihi wa jzihi biha anna ma wa jzihi biha anna ma huwa ahluhu ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma zidna wa la tanqusna wa akrimna wa la tuhinna wa a'atina wa la tahrimna wa athirna wa la tu'thir alayna wa ardina wa arda'anna ya arhamar rahimin wa ya akramal akramin wa ya bil jalali wal ikram so last time we looked at these verses of surah yunus and we were, we were talking about how these people were not going to believe they were not going to benefit from the clear miracles and the clear signs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed within ourselves within the world around us and those that come to us through revelation they just won't believe so after all of this <clears throat> after all of the truth coming to them and them engaging with the messengers and them hearing the, the, the verses and them seeing the signs and the miracles it's as though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I couldn't, what's next like what are they waiting for Right, uh, and it's 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 a form of mockery. He's mocking these people who do need a bit of that to just you know shake them out of their you know apathy and like you, you you're making the worst decision ever. Like as we saw, that like, Huyay ibn Akhtab, you know this rabbi from Medina. His brother asked him when they went to see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he went to Medina, when he moved to Medina. Like, is he a prophet? And he said yes. And he said, what are we going to do? He said, they're going to fight him. Why? Because they couldn't stand the fact that he wasn't from the children of Ishaq, alayhi salatu wasalam. Rather, he was from the children and the descendants of Sayyidina Ismail, alayhi salatu wasalam. So, rejection, just based on racism. So, what, I mean, what a foolish decision it is when you know that someone's a messenger and disbelieving in him has consequences and you you take that you, you say fine i'm going to you know that this person is going to disbelieve in that messenger regardless of the consequences that is not intelligence right well, that's a foolish thing to do so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the messengers fahal yantadhiruna illa mithla ayyam alladhina khalaw min qablihim qul fantadhiru Inni ma'akum min al So what are they waiting for? Allah compares them, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to a group of people who are waiting, they're expecting something. Right? Just the way these people are, they're in this situation where proofs and miracles have come to them and they're saying that, and, and the proofs say that there's a, a consequence to whatever they choose and they've chosen the wrong thing. And what do they think is going to happen? So he's saying, are they waiting? So he's compared them to people who are waiting for something to happen. Almost as though they're waiting for the sign to come and the miracles of the destruction to come. And yeah, okay, when we see it, we'll believe it. So what are they waiting for? That? فَهَلْ يَنْتَظِرُونَ إِلَّا مِثْلَ أَيَّامِ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Are they waiting for anything except the same torments? Ayam here, they use the word day to refer to significant events, right? Such as, like in English, um, uh, you know, in Arabic they would refer, use day to refer to a battle. The day of this, Yawm al-Badr, right? Yawm al-Furqan. It means that the battle, the day the battle happened. So, um, there are similar usages in other languages. So, but here he's talking about those tremendous and momentous events that came and just destroyed people, wiped them off the face of the earth. Alladina uh, khalaw min qablihim, those who have passed on, passed before these people, like way before. Oh, sorry, min qablihim, just before, to indicate even they might have been a long time uh, in terms of you know temporality, but in terms of the successive pattern of events people disbelieve and miracles and messengers come uh, so then they're punished and the next people 
disbelieve when miracles and messengers come, so they're punished. So in that succession, it's they're straight after them. So it's as though it's just they're following on like dominoes falling, right? But here, it, in terms of actual time, it might have been a while, right? So the context makes it seem it was really close. So what happened to them will likely happen to you. So change. So what are they waiting for? Are you are they waiting for anything but? Uh, you know what resembles the the calamities they faced, right? So if if that's the case, then Allah says. Uh, so he here he's asking the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then he tells the Prophet, "No, you tell them that if if you're waiting now, just changing the style, so that it will make them reflect a bit more." Qul say, O Messenger, "Fantaziru, then wait. You keep waiting, right?" Inni ma'akum min al muntazirin. I am with you as one of those who are waiting, those who are known and recognized as being people who are waiting for something. Here, here waiting for those momentous events of Allah's revenge. Uh, you know, he says, then he says, so nominal sentence with inna, inni, I truly am with you also. One of those who are waiting, so do so. Keep waiting, and then what's going to happen when it comes? The prophets uh, are always uh, safe. They are saved and rescued uh, from the punishment, as are their followers. And then the, those who oppose them are destroyed. So he says, "Thumma nunaji rusulana waladina amanu kadalika haqan alaina." Nunjil mu'minin. Then we saved our messengers for those uh, and those who believed. For it is our duty to save the believers. And because this life is a test, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tests people in different ways. The prophets have their own tests. The believers have their tests. The disbelievers have their tests. He says, "Thum." Then after a long stretch, because rarely is it a, is it a case of, or it's not the case where the prophets come, they deliver the message, they're rejected, and then immediately there's a destruction. No, it's it's allowed to play out. <coughs> Allah lets it occur. <clears throat> in order to give them respite, in order to give these people an opportunity to turn back, sometimes someone may not turn back and repent on the first day or the second day. It might take months. Uh, Allah allows them years, but eventually it does come. Thumma nunaji rusulana. Allah says, Subhanahu wa Taala, that He rescues and nunaji tafail, which indicates sometimes in the long term. A process, or you can indicate, you can understand here, as we said earlier, that the the steps are put in place, like Sidna uh, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam being told, build your ship. Sidna Musa being told, he would take your people, go at night and go to the, um, go in this direction towards the sea. So it's 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 a not an instant thing; it's a process. Or nunji in the other qira'ah just focusing on the actual moment of being rescued, right? You can understand it like that. ثم ننجي أو ثم ننجي رسولنا our messengers because they're the representatives of God they have the most right to um, to be safe and protected from uh, the harm that comes to the enemies and the opponents of Allah subhanahu wa taala those who um, align themselves with the devil basically right they just want to uh, oppose the messengers so uh, you know they don't get saved walladina amanu and those who actually believe see their iman benefits him as we talked about last time you know their iman benefits them and they're saved from the punishment and then they're allowed to thrive on the earth until the time of their death and then the akhirah is the best time where the reward comes كَذَلِكَ حَقًّا عَلَيْنَا نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ No less than that. In that amazing, significant way, as we've seen, and he's, he's mentioned it. Uh, in the whole theme of the surah, do something before it's too late. So he says, he says, in that amazing way, it's a right upon us. Meaning, almost like it's an obligation on God that he has made upon himself. No one can obligate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do anything. No one can force Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can make Allah do anything. But he says in that amazing way, it's a right upon us to rescue the believers, to rescue and save those who are firm in their iman, which also indicates that the reason why they're saved, the reason why they're rescued is their iman, is their faith. That they believed in Allah, they turned to Allah, 
that's what happened then right kadalika haqqan alayna nunjil mu'mini it's right upon <clears throat> and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does uh, this as we've seen throughout history many many times allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rescues them i mean the biggest sign of it is that uh, all of the disbelievers were destroyed uh, in the time of sayyidina nuh and we're all descendants of the prophet nuh alayhi salatu wasalam uh, and that's what he did and then he says qul ya ayyuhan nas in kuntum fi shakkin fi dini fala a'budu alladhina ta'buduna min duni allahi walakin a'budu alladhi yatawaffakum wow wa umirtu an akuna min almu'minin very strong powerful words say o prophet o humanity if you're in doubt about my faith then know that i do not worship those idols you worship instead of allah but i worship allah who has the power to cause your death and i have been commanded be one of the believers look at this so after all of this saying that these people people won't believe and you know that they've had every reason to believe you could think you so told might say well what if what if that they have a, a genuine excuse for not believing he's saying no that's not the case <clears throat> because of the proofs so he says ya qul say to them o messenger ya ayyuhan nas o hum o humanity primarily addressing his you know um his contemporaries uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam spoke to quraish but it includes every one of his uh, nation so everyone after the time of the prophet is part of his ummah and the ummah is of two types those who are called and then those who respond those who respond obviously a smaller group than the believers but everyone is called and so he says o oh, humanity right if you're in doubt meaning if you think any aspect of the religion that Allah gave his messenger whether it's the tawhid element or whether he him being a messenger or anything related to the Quran or the teachings all of these things if you think that they're wrong then firstly look at the proofs anyone who stops and with a fair mind and an open heart uh, looks at the truth of Islam they will they will see it's true after that it's on it's on them whether they want to accept it and embrace it or not right but it's evident you don't there's no leaps in logic you don't have to believe that god is actually one being but in, in his one being but his three beings and his the father himself and then his own son and then there's a third element of the holy ghost who it's not very clear what his role is and that you know is there a superiority is there a hierarchy it doesn't make sense you don't have to to have a leap of faith where logic isn't in place no it makes perfect sense <coughs> are there things in islamic theology or the general belief in islam uh, are there elements we won't understand yes because you know it talks about paradise hell other other things and you know if it's within the realm of something being possible then there's there should be no doubt uh, regarding it and that you know that an all powerful creator can make things happen right and so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sh- sh- given the truth to everyone it's just a case of someone wanting to open themselves up to accept it so he says to quraish that in kuntum in if you are i mean there's literally no reason why there should be but if you are in doubt regarding my deen my way my religion right fala a'budu alladhina ta'buduna min duni allah then i don't worship those who you worship besides allah they would worship st- stones they would worship idols some people you know you know in our times in times past worship their desires whatever it's just about having as much fun and you know enjoying it's like going to a theme park and having as much fun before closing time and that's what they make of their lives and <clears throat> some people worship their political positions and some people worship their achievements and all these things that people worship he said i don't worship any of them walakin a'budu alladhi yatawaffakum but rather i worship the one who will cause your death yatawaffa tawaffi i mean the root word means to take back your right fully you lend someone 100 pounds and you take 100 back not just 99 or 98 100 back right so you take back what's yours fully so allah gave you your soul and he takes it back at the time of your death fully it's his right so uh, the arabs 
in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you know they believed in this idol or that idol but they indicated that the idols intercede before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but none of them could deal with the concept of death right so they didn't say that the idols give life or can prevent someone from dying no what uh, what they realized Allah is the one who does this and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if someone rejected it right he's saying the one who gave you life the one who gives you death okay get out of that one right get out of that one if you think that um uh, this religion is fake then the one who created us the one who's going to cause your death and then what's going to happen after death resurrection you will go to him you're going to be judged and then there's a punishment if you disbelieve if you turn away from him that being is the one who i worship right wa umirtu and i've been commanded by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's not just based on sound reason uh, reason and logic but on top of that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him be upright be straight and be of those who are firm in their iman and firm those who firmly turn to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so umirtu and i've been commanded to be one of those who of the firm believers not just that but he says وَأَنْ أَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلدِّينِ حَنِيفًا وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And here's another command, right? And that, um, uh, be steadfast in your faith in all uprightness and do not be one of the polytheists, right? So, iqama uh, to make something stand uh, literally, but here it, it's, it's a metaphor for complete, and utter direction and devotion to Allah. Allah for someone to devote themselves and direct themselves towards God and go towards worshiping Allah and pleasing him with every ounce of their being every fiber in their being everything they can do with their heart and soul turn to Allah be the servant of Allah that's what he's being commanded to do so leaving others everything else hanifan as we've talked about before a uh, hanif is someone who who has an aversion to anything that is wrong and improper uh, vile immoral base so worshiping an idol when Allah has created you ya'kuluna khayrahu wa ya'buduna ghayrahu as Imam al-Biqa'i says that they eat the good meaning the, the, the blessings that Allah has given but yet they go and worship someone else right that a Hanif would find this detestable no so he'd incline away from it this is not if someone puts something towards you that has a pungent smell or a disgusting smell you want to avoid it so he avoids all that is immoral like that and then he was he's told wala takunanna and do not be in any way shape or form at all one of the polytheists those who associate others in divinity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who deify anything else besides Allah and clearly as we talked about a couple of sessions ago this, these are words said to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I mean the initial commands clearly even for him right sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he's a believer aman al-rasul right but um, these things the prophet would never do anything like this so the ind- indication is that Allah is saying it to the prophet but it's for everyone else to listen to and apply in their lives you know they're the ones who are actually being addressed here and then he says wala tad'u min dunillahi ma la yanfa'uka wa la yadurruk fa in fa'alta fa innaka idham min adh-dhalimin look at this and do not call on so ibada do not invoke instead of Allah what can neither benefit nor harm you for if you do then in that situation only you will you will certainly be one of the wrong doers so who do you call on when you're desperate when you think no one else can help people call on god but normal ibadah normal worship uh, the pinnacle of it is dua when you go and say oh give me this oh so and so give me this because you believe they can benefit you they can harm you that you shouldn't go to anyone else only you know this being and in reality it's only God it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who can give things so he says and don't in any way shape or form in no situation don't call on with this call of worship this supplication on anything that can't actually benefit you or harm you 
Right? You know, I have a pen. There's no point. Literally, if I get this pen and if I, if I was to address my, you know, pen and say, you know, pour my heart out and express my deepest desires, you know, after me doing so is the same as me, before me doing so. The pen can't hear. The pen doesn't understand. The pen can't do anything. It can't give me anything. So what's the point? So go to your creator. And then he says, um, for in for in fa'alta and if you do and clearly the messenger wouldn't sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for in the nominal sentence with in even in that situation so if the messenger won't do this anyone else who does this would be even min al-zalimin one of those people who are of the firm wrongdoers Zulm, a volume puts something in other than its proper place, treats uh, things in other than the appropriate way. So worshipping something that can't benefit you when Allah is the one who's given you all of your benefit. Worshipping something that can't avert any harm or cause you any harm when Allah is the one that keeps harm from you and He can, ha uh, he can cause difficulties to descend upon you. Why then? Why? Why do people do this? So He says if you do this, it'd be zulm. So let's stop here and then we'll continue from this point insha'Allah ta'ala and we'll conclude uh, the surah. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.